Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. This is your host, Ken Lane. We're here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And this has been a week of transition. It was so nice. I pulled out the short pants. I was ready to go. And then later this, you know, the midweek this week, it's uh, pull the long jeans back out and put another layer on. So that's just the way the mountains go. That's how it always is every year. That's why the locals use the demarcation line as Mother's Day. Mother's Day is when you put in the summer things, things that love heat, things that want it to be 80, 90, 100 degrees. Those things you plant after Mother's Day. Really starting the end of February through, through April, we, that's spring planting. Those are things that love warm days, cool nights, and can handle this transition between, you know, it might snow a little bit, might frost some, might, it's, it's nice, but it, if it does freeze, it's a flash freeze, a real light frost, and then it warms right back up because the soil is warming up. Things that love that kind of weather is going to be pansies. Your, this is the time to put fruit trees in, uh, uh, evergreens. If you've got a neighbor that just you want to obliterate with a, a wall of green plants, now is the time. There's This is when you're really honed in. This is when you really want to be planting herbs. Great time to plant herbs. They love this. Uh, rosemaries and lavenders and, and uh, oreganos and thymes. My time is starting to flush out, starting to grow. And so this is the time. And so there's certain things that love that. There's no other time to plant a forsythia or a lilac or flowering quince, uh, all these early spring, uh, 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 rhododendron, azaleas. This is the best selection. You don't want to wait till after Mother's Day or you'll lose the best selection of the most options or you won't have as many color choices. And so you, there's there's a season for everything. And that's why this 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 week represents what spring really can be in the mountains of Arizona. One week, super nice. The next week is a little colder, and then, then it warms right back up. And so that, that's how it is. Now, this week I was finishing up my taxes, and I do my taxes with uh, eBarb Accounting. They've been with us for years. Went to school with the kids. I mean, just like it's a small town. They do great taxes for small business uh, entrepreneurs. They do, it's exceptional. Uh, so Marion does my taxes every year. I picked up... Uh, taxes this, this week, sending off this payments and stuff. And, uh, I left the top down on the car. When was this earlier this week, Monday or Tuesday, something like that. It was nice. And so I come back out and the elm trees, they're back. They've got these humongous elms. It was starting, the wind was starting to kick up and it threw seed everywhere. My car was filled with debris and I should have known. I sh I knew I was thinking aphids. I was actually worried about aphids up in the trees, sucking the juice out and then spitting, you know, sap onto my car. That didn't happen. It was seed. This is going to be, if, with this system that came through, the way this, the, the, the weather's warming up, let me give you some insider tips. If you want elms coming up all over your yard, I mean, these seeds, especially Siberian elm or these Asian elms. Uh, now, the Princeton elms, the American elms, no problem. There's new hybrids that are not a problem at all. They're great trees, but some of the wild ones are rather trashy and they're disease ridden and aphids love to eat them. And then elf, elm leaf skeletonizers. I, I would never plant these wild elms in my own yard. In fact, I cut them down. If you've got those or your neighbors have them, what will happen is these seed will start coming up everywhere. Weeds are going to be everywhere. They're starting to emerge everywhere. Here's the tip. Please do yourself a favor. Take the pressure off of weeding and these seed coming up every place. I have put weed and grass stopper down all over my yard. I put it down in the backyard, the front yard, in over the rock beds, in between the shrubs, by the front street, in between the rose gardens. Weed and grass stopper does not allow the seed to germinate. So it keeps them. They can blow in. They can, they can come in on your soil and be fine. It can rain. It can go take off. 
but you're not going to have elm trees coming up all over your yard. For some of you, you're surrounded, you poor folks. You're going to be pulling up this seedling, hundreds of seedlings everywhere. So I just, here at the garden center, I just used 20 bags. So this is a huge property. So there's acreage and acreage of plants around here. I don't want the staff to be weeding. I want them to be helping customers choose just the right tree or shrub or putting together a great vegetable garden or picking the right herb. I don't want them going out and trying to pick up all these weed, you know, elm seedlings. And so we put weed and grass stopper throughout the whole place and we just don't have that issue or it mitigates it. It'll reduce 95% or more of all the weeds that show up. So we just don't have weeds here at the garden center or my house. And that's how we do it. Weed and grass stopper. It's really going to be a game changer. It also works. Uh, you're just about, as soon as we get up to mid seventies, which it looks like next week, it is glorious. I mean, we are talking what the mountains of Arizona are famous for. It looks like the weather is going to, the stars are going to align and it's just going to be gorgeous. Um, that's when the weeds really go crazy and your summer weeds start coming up. That would be goat head. That's the one with that little burr on, you know, your dog steps on it and just starts limping around. That's goat head. A uh, tumbleweed will start coming up. Uh, foxtail's been up for dandelions have been up. So you want to get the weed and grass stopper down before the plants actually emerge from the ground. Because once they're up, it doesn't affect plants at all. It only affects the seed. It keeps the seeds from coming up. So if, if you don't do that, uh, then then you're just going to have to deal with, you're going to break out the hoe and, you know, every other day be be weeding stuff, which is just a chore. I mean, let's face it. It's Adam and Eve. It's their fault. They, they, they sinned, they ate the apple, and then we were kicked out. And what's one of the curses? Weeding. That's one of the things to toil in the garden. And that's just not, you don't have to toil anymore. Weed and grass stopper stops that. So I put that down. One other quick tip while I'm on that. Uh, so in the, my front yard, I've created this courtyard feel. I've surrounded. I've got courtyards of water features and magnolias and underplantings and uh, rosemary's trailing over, you know, raised bed walls, uh, thyme lawns. It's just beautiful. You just want to sip a glass of tea and watch a sunset, watch the hummingbirds. I mean, it's really nice. From the front street, we get people walking by. We're in a neighborhood where it's a neighborhood full of walkers. They love walking. And I love to see neighbors walking when I want to see them. But when I just want to sit there and watch the hummingbirds, I don't want to be seen. I just want to come home and pour some, enjoy the sunset and, and, and just be, be private. And so there at the front of, by the street, I planted Spartan junipers. This is beautiful, just gr rich green juniper. It's not noted for pollen or allergy issues. Those are the big, big uh, alligator bark, shaggy bark junipers. Those are the ones that cause that. These are smaller, pint size. They grow up, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 feet tall and about four or five feet wide. So I just put a row of them. Well, junipers like, there's one insect that eats junipers, spider mites. Spider mites come out in the summer. So they'll come out oh, in another month they'll be out. And so my junipers, I've had this issue before. They can kill a tree. They can kill a juniper. I've, I've been downtown on, on Mount Vernon Street, downtown Prescott, glorious, huge shaggy park juniper, just magnificent specimen. Helped a customer with that. And, and the tree was white with spider webs. It was in, infested, just totally covered. There was not one leaf showing. It was all spider mites. If you've got, if you know you're going to get those on certain kinds of plants or you've had issues before, I go out and I treat my Spartan juniors, my, this is my own personal gardens, with plant protector. I know they're coming. It's a liquid. I mix it up in a watering can. I did it this week and I put it on my junipers, things that I knew I was going to get uh, spider mites on. In the backyard, they want to get on my weeping redwood. I've got this very exotic tall, just weeping sequoia. It's, it's just, it's a showpiece and the spider mites can get on it. So some years are worse than others, but I just, I just put it on plant protector. I pour it on there and 
no spider mites. Just if, if you know they're coming, don't wait till you have an infestation and we have to spray it and then treat it and then do all this stuff. If you just know, just treat it with plant protector. It's a liquid, mix up on a watering can, pour it right at the, where the roots are, and it takes it up, takes care of spider mites as they show up. They're winged. They just fly around the neighborhood looking to eat your you know, evergreens. Just treat You've them. You've been listening to The Mountain it. Gardener with Ken right Lang, back. owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Hi Waters with our plants of the week and our flowering Easter baskets. The garden center is stocked full of these big bold flowers grown to perfection. We've grown 200 baskets that mesh, intertwine, and spill with colors. They make a perfect gift for neighbors, moms, pastors, or a good friend. Don't forget to treat yourself to spring flowers as well. These locally grown baskets are only available until Easter Sunday and all for under 20 bucks. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Color your Easter with flowers. Gee, my flowers just bloom too much. Said no one, ever. Hi, this is Kenneth Waters. We had a crazy winter and everyone's ready for flowers in the garden. Waters Flower Power is made specifically for Arizona that gives flowers that extra boost to burst into bloom. It's an energy kick in the plants. Get ready for roses that rule, peppers that pop, and tomatoes that triumph. More power to the flowers with Flower Power at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. We are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. And this has been a week of questions. And the big one's going to be, you know, what do I do with the cold? Do I need to worry with the cold? Uh, should I, should I, I mean, just the storm that came in, what was that? Uh, Friday, Thursday, Friday, Mm -hmm. cooler than it's warmer next week looks. Did you see the weather for next week? I did not. It's like 70 degrees. It's like Ah. perfect basking in the sun weather. It's perfect. (laughs) I love it. Good. I can't wait to break out the short pants and keep them. Well, the minute you I, do that, it'll snow again. I know. Right? Yeah. I, I don't mind substituting my my uh, short pants with a swimsuit every once in a while, but I don't want the, the jeans. I want those gone, except for business meetings. Then I feel stuffy. You know, <laughs> I feel suffocated. So, uh, yeah. We have friends that wear shorts year round. It can snow two feet, and they still have shorts on. They're not. They're not going to business meetings and. <laughs> Going to political, you know, meeting the mayor and the senators and talking to well, uh, win attorneys. Very and, true. And, uh, they're, they're relaxed and uh, comfortable. They're retired. retired. <laughs> they're retired. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> we'll get there someday. We will. Hopefully not too soon. Yeah. Or you might drive me crazy at home. Uh, you think I'm going to stay home? <laughs> <laughs> I always thought I would drive you crazy. More so. than likely. Yes. <laughs> So anyway, enough about mm-hmm. us. What uh, Garden questions. That's at yeah. this segment. What are other folks talking about? We look at uh, emails and Facebook and it just all kinds. They're coming in from all over the place. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do we got? Anything interesting? Mesmerize us. Well, I don't know about that. But we've had a lot of questions this week about roses and keeping thrip yeah. and aphids yeah. out of the roses. Yeah. And what's your recommendation? So... In fact, uh, Cheryl, our rose queen, she, we've got a uh, Cheryl Christensen. She, she's uh, all things roses. She, she's the thing. She's our rose queen. She probably sells fifteen hundred roses for us alone by herself uh, each year. And she came and going, Ken. Oh, it's so exciting! Look underneath the microscope. Microscope. I found aphids and baby aphids <laughs> on the same leaf. It's so interesting. Only a plant nerd would look at bugs and go look at it you can't look away and on a microscope an aphid looks like like uh, an alien <laughs> life form that just landed crawled out of a spaceship with multiple legs and huge eyes they're scary looking mm-hmm. uh okay back back to roses and how to get rid of them uh thrip and aphids they're common in spring they, they show up now they're, they're out there right now in fact if you look at your roses you'll probably find some aphids on them that's just part of the game uh, a few ro- a few aphids not a big deal. A lot of aphids, they cause the leaves to curl. Uh, they can cause the flower buds to come out and then fade. They can cause the flower buds to actually uh, uh, get this black 
looks like someone took a Bic lighter towards the end of it. That's typically thrip inside the, uh, the flower. Mm -hmm. So these are very common spring insects and very easy to control. We have a lot of roses. And what I did is uh, um, I took a rose and flower, systemic rose and flower food. There's a fertilizer that has a bug control mixed with it. You put it at the base of the, the um, rose and then water it in and the plant will actually absorb it and it becomes un intolerable. It just doesn't taste good to aphids and thrip then. And so your first buds will come out clean. Now, if you read the, the instruction that says, oh, feed every six weeks with this fancy uh, uh, food and it, you will, all your worries will go away. I, I really don't like systemic controlled bug things type of controls year round. I just like it for the initial spring buds. That's when most of the damage is caused to roses specifically, those first few. Grasshoppers don't care for roses that much. You don't get that many caterpillars. Those summer things don't really bother roses so much. They like other things. But aphids and thrip, that's your nemesis with roses. A, a rose food with systemic. We've got it at the, at the garden center here. You sprinkle that on, it's granular, you water it in, plant absorbs it, and it takes away your, your woes. If you see aphids actually on those bushes, we have an all-organic, completely natural bug killer called Triple Action. We've got it ready to use. It's neem oil and some, some other stuff, but uh, uh, this neem oil is an all-organic bug control. You spritz them down and, and they will go away just like that. They're not going to drop instantly down to the ground and quiver, but they will actually disappear. The And, and the plant will actually become, it has an odor to it. Neem oil has a, a scent that actually repels plants as well at the same time. So that's what I would do. I'd almost tag team it twice. Mm -hmm. uh, system, rose food was systemic, uh, without question, just your roses. And then uh, the rest of the year, I would use all-purpose plant food, just follow up with that uh, natural food for the rest of of the season. And then as you see thrip or aphids on roses, spritz them with triple action. Sounds like an action plan. There you go. That's <laughs> a right. terrible pun. What is that? I, actually, you know. pretty good. You were, you were waiting all, you know, all of 90 seconds to say that, weren't you? No, it actually just came to me. <laughs> that happens sometimes. <laughs> all right. Our other question is from Linda. She wants to know what is the difference between a determinate and a indeterminate <laughs> tomato. Oh boy, I wrote a column on this, and it can get really. It, it, it's a good question. So determinate, indeterminate. So if you go to watersgardencenter.com, that's our website. All the all my columns I write, it goes there. There's a search bar at the top. Mm -hmm. uh, just just type in determinate or indeterminate or tomatoes, and that article will pop up. So it will get more detailed than you really want here. But really, it's it's how fast does it grow? Is it a bush or is it a vine? Mm -hmm. Most of your newer varieties are coming out as determinate. Yes, they are determined to be a certain size. They grow to a certain, so a, a dwarf variety for a container, that's determinate. Indeterminate is it just keeps on growing. It's a vine. It grows bigger than you are, and then it keeps wanting to grow. It's, it's a huge bush. Early girls, celebrities, champions, better boys, uh, heirloom varieties like brandy wines, indeterminate. So okay. it's a size thing. It's not a fruiting. It's not a fruiting size. Nope. You can have a determinate or indeterminate cherry. You can have a determinate or indeterminate medium size, uh, like an early girl or celebrity or champion or big boy size tomato. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so that's not really the fruit. It's all about the plant mm -hmm. size will, will be different. So we're trying to introduce more and more dwarfed varieties. And we don't use those words because people get confused. They go, well, which one? It's like annual and perennial. Well, which, which one <laughs> comes back every year? You're always describing it. We right. just go patio tomato yeah. or dwarf or container tomato or for garden varieties big big vines need a trellis you'll need a tomato cage for this one those are going to be your indeterminate mm -hmm. but there's no difference uh a bush one isn't going to produce less fruit per se than an indeterminate one. no not at the all one. Not, okay. not per plant actually the newer varieties are coming out with more production per size per mm -hmm. vine per leaf count there's more production coming out of those and really, that comes down to sun. How much sun does a plant 
have. Right. Uh, the more foliage the sun sees, uh, tomatoes are basically sugar factory machines. They just mm-hmm. produce fruit. And so the more sunlight you have for those tomatoes, the more photosynthesis they can create, the more fruit, the larger the fruit. That's going to be de- determined more than the variety. Okay. Yeah. Gosh. And mid-size, we should just cover this just, uh-huh. just so f- folks know it. For the mountains of Arizona, it's very difficult to grow really large tomatoes. True. Uh, uh, brandy wine. Uh, beef um, steak. Your beef steak. All these really big, you know, one slice is the size of a sandwich, right? That big. Uh, because our season is so cool at night, mm-hmm. the plant shut down, and then it's fairly short. It's Mother's Day through about... First part of October or so, so this, this, uh, those bigger tomatoes are famous for. They've get, they're loaded up with green. To, the plants are loaded with big green tomatoes, and they haven't picked one yet. And frost is expected next week. Mm-hmm. That's it's better to grow medium size varieties or smaller varieties. So your mm-hmm. cherry varieties, sweet one hundreds, or your medium celebrities, champions, early girls. There's a whole series of San Diego's. There's a whole series of medium size. You'll get much better production and sooner than the really large ones. It's unique for the mountains of Arizona. Mm-hmm. Great questions this week, folks. Be right back with Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Growing up in Prescott, we knew spring was here when my grandmother's lilacs bloomed. I'm Lisa Waters Lane, and my grandmother would be thrilled with the new Bloomerang Purple Lilacs at Waters Garden Center. They don't just bloom once in spring, they bloom again in summer. Mine bloomed three times last year, making spring last well into fall and just $29.99. Come check out all the heavenly new sights and scents that are making this spring the most beautiful ever. Lilacs like Grandma used to grow and better. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Plants are a lot like puppies. They need care, water, and food. You wouldn't forget to feed your puppies, so don't forget to feed your plants. Water's 744 All-Purpose Plant Food is a gourmet meal for your plants. The only food for Arizona plants for the nutrients they need for big blooms, a hefty harvest, and tremendous trees, all naturally. It's time to feed your plants with 744 All-Purpose Plant Food from Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's Waters with two T's, GardenCenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. A touch of advice I can give you too. Now, at Waters Garden Center, we, we grow a lot of our own plants, especially the color. We're famous for our flower baskets, geraniums. No one does fruit trees better than us as far as local varieties. Uh, big shade trees like Instant, the varieties that really thrive and give you shade. Large sizes. Now, those are certain things we're uh, herbs, we're fam- perennial uh, varieties we're, we're famous for. Now, one thing to really watch, our flower baskets. We just grew 200 Easter baskets. So we call them Easter baskets. Lisa designs them, puts them all together, and we, we you know, they're nineteen ninety nine dollars introductory price. Just people want color. Here you go. They're only here until Easter. Well, we found that um, about six weeks later, people take these glorious baskets home. They're covered in color. Covered. You can hardly see the foliage. There's so many flowers. They're beautiful. About six weeks later, people water them, and they water them, and they water them, and all the food that was in there gets flushed out. And then about six weeks in, by the end of May, uh, they're just green, big green blobs. They, they hardly any foliage on them. And, and it came down to food. And so they used up all the food. It takes a lot, a tremendous amount of energy to create that many flower blossoms, especially a big hanging basket. Now we're using a larger size basket, more soil volume, but still it can use up the, the nutrients that are inside that soil. So you need to replenish that. And so people weren't, and then they, the thing just turns green. So I went, Oh, we got to solve this. People are, they're buying these things for the color. And so I, I created a, a, a fertilizer called flower power. Flower power is 50. It's got 52% 
phosphorus. That middle number, nitrogen, phosphorus, potash. That middle number in a fertilizer creates flowers and fruits. That's what it does. You want bigger fruits, uh, more fruits, sweeter fruits, larger flowers, brighter flowers, more fragrance in your flowers. Give it phosphorus. This is water soluble, so you, it's got a scoop, you know, a scoop per gallon. You put mix in your watering can, and you 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 treat your hanging baskets or anything that blooms, containers, raised beds, whatever, and you want it to bloom again. You you do this a couple times a month. Just water it in with this flower power, and it will just be the showiest flower display. I mean, your neighbors will be envious. They'll walk by going, oh, wow, your yard really looks good. That's great. It's flower power. Now, it's it's uniquely designed for here. It's as much phosphorus as I could get into that particular fertilizer without it basically coagulating, settling to the bottom. So it's still liquid form. So it's very uh, uh, readily available to that plant. And so it picks it up just immediately. And so you create more flowers. This is really critical for things like roses or dahlias or geraniums. Uh, you get these wave uh, uh, trailing varieties like lobelia. We have this white stream lobelia. Big flowing tendrils of white flowers it to, with thousands, literally thousands of flowers. To pull that off and really be fragrant and, and showy, it takes a lot of food. Well, that flower power really makes a difference. If you've not tried or if you've struggled or your flowers just seem a little off or they just aren't what you see in the magazines, more than likely, it's almost go to Vegas on this, it's going to be a nutrient thing. The flower power is meant to actually help you uh, get more, more blooms on that plant. So I shot a video this week and uploaded it to our YouTube channel. We have over a thousand. In fact, we just passed our millionth view online. We've got our Waters Garden Center YouTube channel. We have our own station. So you just go to YouTube, you know, you go to Google YouTube, type in Waters Garden Center, it will pop up. Um, million views. I, here's why we, we get so many. I just was planting my front raised beds in my own garden. So most of the pictures on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube, they're from my gardens. Or they're here at the garden center. When I see something different, I usually go, oh, oh, gardeners are going to love this. Click or take a video and, sh and upload it. This week, I was planting my, my, hanging, my baskets. What I do, this is kind of a garden hack that really works here locally. I've got raised beds, but then the trees kind of the roots are so bad in these raised beds. What I did is I took a black grower's bucket and I buried it in that raised bed. Then I plant my flowers inside that. And what I did, I took home six really big matching hanging baskets, six of them. And I just planted them right inside this big, uh, uh, in the ground. So the bucket's in the ground. So you can't tell it's planted in this a container. And then I use big flowers because I don't want to wait for them to fill in. I want to enjoy them. I'd rather pay a little bit more and have two months more enjoyment for just a little bit more. You can upsize and just go, well, it's instantaneous. And your neighbors are awestruck at what a great gardener you are. Well, this is how I did it. I just plant in the ground, I fresh potting soil, took a big plant, threw it in there. You can't see any of the bucket. You can't see, it just looks like it's spreading out over the ground and they're consistent across the way. Uh, it, it was just magical. And I showed what I did when I got them all planted. When I got done, I fed them with flower power, just like that. And they're going to push out and elongate. And within a month, they're going to be three feet wide and covered, just covered in flowers. Be right back. Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Gee, my flowers just bloom too much. Said no one ever. Hi, this is Kenneth Waters. We had a crazy winter and everyone's ready for flowers in the garden. Waters Flower Power is made specifically for Arizona that gives flowers that extra boost to burst into bloom. It's an energy kick in the plants. Get ready for roses that rule, peppers that pop, and tomatoes that triumph. More power to the flowers with Flower Power at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. In a new place, it's difficult to know who to trust, how to get help at the house, and which nursery will simply do what they say they'll do. At Waters Garden Center, we're here to help, in the landscape at least. 
Our team of plant ambassadors know your neighborhood. The plants that add color, increase privacy, and add fragrance and beauty. And we can show you exactly how to plant locally. Or we have teams to do all the work for you. We are Ken and Lisa Lane, and we guarantee our plants will live up to every promise here at Waters Garden Center. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And we have Lisa Waters Lane back in the studio. She comes each week with your garden, just a garden idea, just something to share that's uniquely her perspective. And she has been uh, quite busy out, at least in the front yards. Mm-hmm. We're not quite to the backyard yet. I mean, we've got some flowers in there. Mm-hmm. We've cleaned it up. Uh, really, we feel the pressure in the backyard with that first barbecue party. That's when we really go to town and finesse it, <laughs> keep it going. But uh, we'll, we'll have that soon enough as soon as it's warm. It hasn't been warm yet. <laughs> we had like two days of it. We were contemplating eating out on the pad- on the deck like two weeks ago and then it got cold again and we haven't yeah. been out there yet so it's cleaned right. up uh-huh. ready to go the table we took all the furniture uh, covers off and so brought the cushions out. we're ready we brought the fire pit back out it's mm-hmm. it's full of propane but it's just been too chilly or windy to be out there enjoying it true can't but wait summer's coming don't you love summer i do that's my favorite sort of. time of the year yeah, summer and winter <laughs> i love swimming i love skiing just those two things Fishing. I love fishing. I love skiing. I love uh, tobogganing and just watching a snowfall. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't like the wind of spring and fall yeah. just says... That wind this week was... It was ferocious. My goodness. Yeah. I, I'm not a big wind fan either. Ugh. So our pansy or petunias that we planted, mm-hmm. they look great. They came through like a champ. There are no worries. They're almost... Mm-hmm. I think they might have grown this week, which was surprising, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. yeah. No, everything's looking really good. Even our pansy baskets. I mean, they're hanging on, looking nice. And um, our Ito peony. Oh, my gosh. I beautiful. I am so excited about that. I can't wait for it to bloom. Yeah. It's going to be gorgeous. I talked to our, our uh, Jim Roop, our, our, mm-hmm. our rep, and I said, Jim, we want every color, every shape, every size of Ito peony. And Ito peony, this is uh, for you you folks that know peonies. You know what these are. But you you grafted a tree peony onto a traditional English pre peony, so you got this crossover. It's this ginormous shrub. It's a it's 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 hip high. It's huge. The flowers are as big as your hand. Super fragrant, more fragrant than regular English peonies. They're larger, more of them, and the foliage is just so lacy and beautiful. It's but pretty. we've got mm-hmm. one in this. We're growing at the front in the front patio. Yellow. It's yeah. yellow and it's in a big pot. Mm-hmm. And it's glorious. Just I think it's on its third year. I think third year we've had it in there. And I swear, there's probably 40 blossoms on yeah, it. It's I crazy. Yeah. I actually Instagrammed that. At, uh, what was that? Uh, Friday. Uh-huh. Went out and I, the pansies were it was starting yeah. to, the weather was starting to turn. And the pansies just cheer up. When anytime there's any kind of weather, <laughs> they go, oh, it's going to snow. We're so happy. <laughs> and the, the peonies were the same way. They were perked right up going, oh, yeah. God. I'm going to bloom after this. I just looked, I Instagrammed that, and mm-hmm. within like 30 minutes, 200 views. It just went by, it just in, went, instantly went out. It was kind of fun. Everyone right. wants, the color of early spring is brighter it, you than know, it summer. It seems like it. Yeah. 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 Or we've just been sitting in winter too long. Well, that could be we're just bored. <laughs> we've been sipping coffee, looking at our coffee cup too long, and we need to get outdoors and enjoy hummingbirds and butterflies True. again. Very true. What garden question, what kind of topic you got going this week? Well, I thought we would talk about ground covers this week. And okay. I, I know yeah. that doesn't sound very exciting, but I have noticed a huge uptick of new homes in our area. And, you know, they're built like on side of cliffs. I know. <laughs> <You gotta laughs> the vistas go, are beautiful. But <laughs> the vistas are beautiful, but hang on to your shorts when it rains because you could you lose a lot of soil if you're not careful. Or the new homes, it almost looks like you plopped this half million dollar house into a lunar landscape. Yeah. I mean, you got a boulder. A tree is still staked up, kind of lonely. Huge rock lawn. Yeah. And it just looks sterile so you need some ground cover sometimes just Mm -hmm. to soften up that that uh, just to add some greenery Mm -hmm. uh, to Mm -hmm. to the yard you need something to soften up that rock in the midwest you've got grass right i mean everything is just instead of rock just grass they 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 have big mowers to mow it all here we have rock 
And so it gets out of balance. It feels too sterile sometimes. Mm-hmm. You need to soften that up with ground oh, covers. I agree. And and so many of the ground covers are just so easy to take care of. Oh, it's yeah. not like you got to be out there pruning or you know, taking deadheading, that kind of thing. They're just, they take care of themselves, but boy, do they sure make a difference on a hillside or out in your yard instead of just seeing rock and more rock and more rock. Um, They just can really add to the ambiance of your home. So you're talking about plants that are maybe ankle high or or, or below knee high. Oh, easily. Low growing, but they spread out, prostrate. Mm -hmm. So so give us some suggestions or what are some local... Uh, well, things that really perform easily start with the really heavy duty easy you look at them and they're just they take care of themselves so junipers certainly fall in that junipers are very animal resistant very uh, drought hardy once established and hardly require any kind of trimming um, so really nice one for low maintenance and blue chip uh, is the one that grows, what, four inches high? That's very low. I think very, blue rug and blue chip, I always get them confused. Or ice, yeah. Icy blue, that's Icy another blue one. Icy blue, that's another one. It but just they're all similar. Low grown. They look like yeah. a carpet rolled out over mm-hmm. your yard. Yeah, real pretty blue color. Um, nice, easy care. The other one's kind of its cousin there is the green carpet mm-hmm. one. Um, is that right? Yeah. It's carpet yeah. something. Yeah. But it's more green, definitely more green. And you could use that, I think, in place of a lawn. If you didn't want to fuss with mowing your lawn and doing that type of thing, using that green carpet juniper, I think it would be a tremendous replacement. I don't know how it. much traction. How I don't think you play soccer on Well, you would be out anything, there walking on but it. But to but look at it, yeah. oh, yeah, it looks really great. And you mm-hmm. pick basically the color you like. I want it low-growing, spreading, and you know, blue. Or I want green. <laughs> you decide there, and you can blend them together. So yeah. we companion plants. Right, right. There's another other dry, the dwarf garden juniper. I think is really pretty too. So quite a few in that family. Cotoneasters. Um, nice thing about the cotoneasters, you can get three different heights. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you get the coral beauty, which is about two foot tall, spreads yeah. about six to eight feet. So very, very pretty. Eichholz gets about a foot tall, and then you get strebes, which is there again, it's like inches tall yeah. one wonderful thing about them is they all produce a little white flower in the spring and then a really nice red berry on them yeah they're very pretty and they're evergreen mm-hmm. all of these are are they look good year round i think uh, uh tom thumb it's another really low growing cotone aster mm-hmm. or the way people spell it cotton easter is kind of how people <laughs> uh, say it or pronounce it, but it's really cotone aster right is the latin yep mm-hmm. rosemary the creeping rosemary Good. is another terrific loves the heat if you've got a hot side of the house where you want some erosion control uh, that creeping rosemary would be amazing um manzanitas kinnikinix is the other well actually we have two we have uh kinnikinick and i think bearberry Pan- Right? Yeah, but there's oh. another one. Cheyenne? I think it's Panchito. Oh, Panchito. Got it. Um, I think it's about two foot tall gotcha. and spreads out. So We have too many manzanitas in stock. <laughs> we had like <laughs> seven different varieties. It's great. It's really all different sizes. Just all They different grow head sizes. high to mm-hmm. chest high to hip high to knee high to ground cover. And very low between. maintenance. Oh, all yeah. of them low maintenance. It's starting to bloom right now. They are. Very, very pretty. Yeah, I noticed the uh, rosemary, our rosemary in our yard. We've got mm-hmm. creeping rosemary over a wall mm-hmm. and creeping rosemary by that dry wash. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're blooming. The, 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 they're just so pretty. They are pretty. Honeysuckle. Uh, most people think about honeysuckle as a vine. Yeah. You know, growing they're growing fences. up trellises or fences. But there's no reason you can't use it as a ground cover. Yeah. Works very well for that. Along uh, with that. Pike College does that. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of honeysuckle as a ground cover, and they mm-hmm. use uh, a tr- a trumpet vine as mm. a ground cover, which right. is a great big red flower. Right, right. Uh, when I walked out there and went, wow, that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that looks really good. Right. So definitely that would work. A Virginia creeper, yeah. which is another vining uh, plant, would also work very well as a ground cover, keeping things in place. If you have a shadier spot, um, I think the most popular one is the Vinca uh, periwinkle. Yeah. is the other name for it. Puts on that purple flower. So so pretty. It can get a little aggressive, um, so you do have to keep it in check. But it sure is put pretty. it in the right place. Mm-hmm. That makes a great underplanting underneath junipers. Mm-hmm. It does. It just thrives. Yeah. Uh, we got a crop in. I, I just uh, took a video. I'm going to upload them to our, our mm-hmm. YouTube channel. Uh, they are literally covered. They're probably one gallon sizes. They're probably a foot and a half across. There must be 
30 blue flowers yeah, over, over the entire thing. It's unbelievable how mm-hmm. pretty they are. Yeah. So it's a great little ground cover perennial that comes back every year. Sure. So great, great suggestions. So ground covers mm-hmm. to soften that yard in your yard or erosion control or whatever. Now come talk to Lisa and the crew. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners be right back. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Wondering why my garden looks amazing? Well, that's personal. The personal garden shopper service at Waters Garden Center, that is. Before talking with my personal shopper, I had no idea which plants would be best for me. But now my garden is bursting with flowers and buzzing with hummingbirds. Just go to watersgardencenter.com, click on Shop, and choose Personal Garden Shopper. A Waters Garden expert will pick the perfect plants for you, personally. The Personal Garden Shopper, only at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Hi, Waters, with this week's Plant of the Week and our Flirty Skirt Pansies. No more shy pansies. These blooms beam back at you. Frilly, cheery, flirty flowers resemble Marilyn Monroe's rippled skirt blowing in a breeze. She enjoys growing in her inclement weather and a carnival of colors priced at just $7.99. So you can enjoy more than just one. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love flirty flowers, they love to shop. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. One of my favorite plants, a core, a foundational, uh, I guess not, uh, varieties of plants in my yard. I've got heavy javelina pressure, pack rats, uh, occasional deer, not a lot of them, but will go down the street. It's pretty rare. I've seen a bobcat. Uh, really, it's javelina, pack rats, rabbits. Those are my nemesis. And so my core plant uh, varieties are herbs. Herbs do exceptionally well in the mountains of Arizona. Let me tell you why. Because it's dry. So we don't get the, the leaf spotting that you'd get in a more humid type of climate, like the South or Midwest. So there you're always getting black spot, mildews, and all kinds of mayhem, melt off, or all kinds of stuff. We don't get that really. So, and so herbs are mostly perennial. They come back year after year. Even basil, which is very sensitive to cold, it can reseed for you. So they do exceptionally well. All, all the herbs, except for which one? Probably Basil's not truly a perennial. That is, comes back from the same plant, from the roots. That's a perennial. Uh, cilantro really reseeds mainly, profusely. Lemongrass, I can't seem to get that one to come back. But all the others, uh, lavender, uh, rosemary, thyme, oregano, um, all, all the spear, all the kinds of mints, they're, they're all perennials. They come back. Chives, uh, onions, they all come back every year, easily by themselves. So I have entire lawn of creeping thyme. The entire east side of my gardens, I have an herb garden that goes from the top of the house, from the driveway, to the bottom. It's a classic two-story house dug into the side of a mountain. You drive in straight from the parking lot, from the uh, driveway. Then you walk down the stairs to the backyard, and you come out like a story and a half later to the backyard, and then it keeps dropping. But the views, the vistas are gorgeous. But it's a drop-off. Well, these steps, every single step, as you go down to the backyard, there's a whole flight of them. Every step has a different kind of herb, from bay, from uh, uh, rosemary to to uh, chives to fennel to uh, parsley. To I've just got different herbs all the way up and down. The, the It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And as guests come into the backyard party, uh, or the grills and the backyard entertaining is, they get to brush up against these different herbs. The reason I chose herbs there was I want folks to brush up against them so they see and smell and can taste. I can harvest those and use them very easily, either in the backyard or from the kitchen. Um, They they are on the east exposure, so that's kind of your best gardens are on the east side because it gets first light. I mean, just early morning, it's full sun by probably 1 o'clock in the afternoon. 
It's got more shade, and so the the herbs stay plumper and fuller, more fragrant, and just full of just, just delightful mouthwatering zest. That's so so good, and it's in front of the fence, and so the wildlife are thick out there, and so they don't eat herbs. Animals do not eat herbs. You would think they would, but they don't like plants with a textured leaf, which is much like a, um, a lavender, has this real, um, almost a feathery uh, texture to it, to the outside leaf. They don't like that. And they don't like oily plants. They don't like that oily uh, herbal scent to them. They just, they don't like to be smell like an herb. They don't come home and go, honey, look, I smell like mint. Ooh, well, let's have mojitos. They don't, they don't like that at all. They want to go under the radar. They don't want to be smelled or seen or heard. And so they don't, they don't eat herbs. And most of them are perennial. Many of them are evergreen. But mainly, they love this altitude and the intensity of the sun, and they'll take the wind. And so they just adapt really well. If you've struggled or you've never really had fun with herbs, every yard in the mountains of Arizona should have a rosemary. Rosemary comes in two forms, has an upright form like, like a shrub, like a bush. And typically those are going to be things like Tuscan or barbecue rosemary, you know, long stems. You can pick off those branches, take off the leaves and use them as skewers to, to, to grill meats like chicken and pork on the grill. And the, and the rosemary just permeates from the inside out, this wonderful meat flavor on the grill. Uh, we like to rotisserie stuff. So Easter's coming up. We'll rotisserie something out there on the grill. I put a pan of, of water, uh, just a baking tray and put some water in there. And I'll put that just over the flames and I'll pick some fresh herbs and I let them just simmer, uh, below the meats and the meats just pick this up. And so I enjoy the, the barbecue, uh, grilling outdoors. And then the meat picks up part of this flavor. Just everyone comments on how delightful it is, how unusual, how fun it is. And you can do the same if you're new to the area. Oh, herbs are just such a great way. Now, here's the cycle with your herb crops. Most of the herbs are going to come in about the month of May. So you're a little bit early. Now, we're famous for organic herbs. We have a huge herb department. I like herbs as a small business owner because the box stores, they really can't specialize in herbs because you've got to be an expert. You got to know what you're doing and answer questions because herbs can be a bit intimidating. Like, how do you grow lemongrass? What is what is this unique uh, stevia? What what is stevia? They're not going to carry stevia, but but we do. So you've got what six different varieties of creeping thyme? You got to be kidding. There's eight different varieties of mint. What? They're going to carry one, you know, spearmint or something boring like peppermint. Those are good, but why when you can have pineapple or apple or chocolate mint. I mean, those are just so much better. Oh my gosh. I just want to go out and graze the greenhouse and taste them now. Uh, but they're all organic. I mean, if you want to just pick and taste and, and smell the flavors, go for it. They're completely safe, non, non-genetically modified at all. They're just pure herbs. But if you've not grown herbs, oh, they're great in plants. Many times I'll use garlics and some of the more, more uh, fragrant herbs. I'll put those out front by the driveway where I have heavy javelina pressure, and I'll put an herb in there to mask, to hide the scent of the plants I know they will eat. Now, there's a limit to that, but if you're putting pansies out there, they love to pick the flowers off the pansies. But if you plant uh, mint and, you know, and pansies together, they can't smell them as easy. And I find it you, it's a natural repelling action to, to the varmint that are out there. Uh, time lawn. The rabbit stopped eating my lawn as soon as I got rid of the fescue or bluegrass lawn and went with creeping thyme. And I only mow it twice a year. It's evergreen. It blooms at certain times of the year. It's just so e- The dogs like it. The only negative I found with a creeping thyme lawn, there's only one, Low, less water, far less water. It's beautiful. But one negative with dogs they can spot it. We've got a great big Labrador, we have bigger dogs. They can spot a regular lawn too, I guess. But every once in a while, you'll see a spot. Now, now creeping time quickly heals over that. So you don't really notice it. But if you're wanting that pristine lawn that's just on the front of a magazine, may, and you've got dogs, it may not be ideal for you, 
But for me in my situation, I don't want to be committed to a huge water bill. And I absolutely despise mowing. It's right there with, it's right there with weeding. I just, I hate, hate, hate. I mean, can you say hate enough over the airwaves? Weeding. I hate weeds. Weeds. They're my nemesis. Oh, that's why I use. So I open the show with Weed and Grass Stopper. I'm going, let me help you, folks. I can get you past this. It's so easy and super affordable, but it just doesn't cost very much. Now, but those are some things that herbs, there's a lot of choices. May is going to be your peak. And as we get closer and closer to May, we're two weeks out, it'll just ramp up. And you have huge varieties of herbs between May and June. That's going to be your best selection, best varieties from strawberries all the way down to, I mean, society garlics and everything in between. You've got the, your best selection. This is another one. As you find an herb, you do not want to wait and think about it because these are very limited crops. It will not be there the next day, much less next week. It's not going to be there. Oh, can you get some more? The answer is almost always with herbs. No, this is a one shot deal. We had two flats and it's gone. And we had to book those. We had to get those you know, last fall. And there's no more in the greenhouse after that. We're going for varieties of herbs, not depth. So that's if you want a basil, plain old basil, fine. Go to go a box store. They've got thousands of them. That's the only thing you're going to have. But if you want Thai basil, come to Waters. We've got that and, and six other varieties. And you better grab it now because it may or may not be coming next week. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. Gee, my flowers just bloom too much. Said no one ever. Hi, this is Kenneth Waters. We had a crazy winter and everyone's ready for flowers in the garden. Waters Flower Power is made specifically for Arizona that gives flowers that extra boost to burst into bloom. It's an energy kick in the plants. Get ready for roses that rule, peppers that pop, and tomatoes that triumph. More power to the flowers with Flower Power at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. I remember as though it was yesterday. Should we be open Sundays or not? Revolution came after church social. After the fellowship, a friend was heading to the box store to get some plants because Waters wasn't open. Sunday was his only day to garden that week, just like it was yesterday. Waters Garden Center. It's open on Sunday from 9 to 5 with plant experts ready to advise on any subject. My name is Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road here in Prescott. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lang. Let me cover zones with you. I've had this a couple times this week. Ken, what zone are we? Could you tell me the zone? There's a couple different zones. The one you really want to hone in on is the USDA Growers Zone Map. There's, there's the, across the, the country... They've broken down every elevation, every town, every county, every section into zones, growers' zones. And really what this is, it's how cold can a plant go before it dies. That's what zone is. The lower the number, the colder it can get, all the way down to zone one, which is minus like bazillion degrees, minus, I don't know, 50, 60 degrees, some crazy cold. Why would anyone be there in the winter? It's so cold, kind of, kind of cold. In the mountains of Arizona, most of us are a zone seven, solid seven. We need plants that can go down to five, 10 degrees. Okay, that's Prescott Valley, Paulden, Prescott, all the way out, Cortis Junction. We're zone seven. As you drop down an elevation, that would be Cottonwood, Camp Verde, probably Kingman, uh, those areas, you're going to be a zone eight. Probably, probably Cortis Junction, you're probably a zone eight. Uh, uh, Spring Valley, zone eight. Kirkland, um, those areas. Skull Valley, you're zone eight. As you go up the hill to Highland Pines, Williams, Flagstaff, the White Mountains, you all are going to be probably a zone five. You need plants and go minus 10. It gets colder at 7,000 feet than it does at 5,200 feet. And it gets colder at 5,200 feet than it does at 4,000 feet. 
But basically from Black Canyon City, that's going to be desert. That's zone 10. So those plants need heat. I mean, they have zero tolerance for frost. If you even look at those plants cold, they die. I mean, it's just a saguaro. You look at it cold, it will never winter over in the mountains of Arizona. But a Austrian pine will, that's a zone four. I think it goes down to minus 20. A lilac, minus 15. A forsythia, down minus 30 degrees. It goes really cold. And what it is, you're a zone seven, so most of us, plus or minus a zone, okay? So so maybe you're zone eight, zone, zone. Um, you want that that number or lower. So a zone seven can also grow a zone six, five, four, three, two, one. A zone, um, that's for the mount, mountain zones, okay? For the colder zones. Uh, those of you that, if, as you go up, you, you, as you get to zone 10, those, those Phoenix type of, of plants, they don't translate at all to mountain plants. So zones, if you get more on that, um, to go to my website, watersgardencenter.com. In the upper right hand side, there's a search bar. And I wrote an article, a couple of them, on zones. Uh, just type that in, zone at the top, and it will pop right up for you. It's, it's a blog buried down by hundreds of posts. But just type in the, up at the, at the top, search bar, zones, pop right up, and it goes into detail. And I give a link into where where to find the exact zones so you can see the actual map, interactive map on where you're at. It's really, really helpful. Uh, also, we'll go over zones pretty in-depth at this week's garden class. So let me think. I think Friday, we're moving the grow your own groceries to Friday night, Friday afternoon. Sorry, not, not night. Friday at four, this coming Friday at four o'clock, it's grow your own groceries. At the 19th, we'll go over zones. We'll, we'll have vegetable planting calendars. Uh, when do you plant carrots? When do you plant um, cucumbers? When do you plant tomatoes? We go deep into the calendar and the zones of what grows best and what, what size of, of what varieties of tomatoes or peppers grow better than others. We go deep. I mean, you will be, it will up your, your edibles game in a heartbeat. I mean, just mainly vegetables though and some herbs. That'll, that'll be Friday, April 19th at four o'clock here at Waters Garden Center in the back greenhouse. Uh, these can be pretty powerful classes. They have, they fill up. So maybe bring your own chair your own latte. Uh, you can bring one to me and I'd be really happy. <laughs> but Ken and Lisa Lane, we camp out here at Waters Garden Center. We love saying hi to friends or fans of the show. Hi, Waters, with our plants of the week and our flowering Easter baskets. The garden center is stocked full of these big, bold flowers grown to perfection. We've grown 200 baskets that mesh, intertwine, and spill with colors. They make a perfect gift for neighbors, moms, pastors, or a good friend. Don't forget to treat yourself to spring flowers as well. These locally grown baskets are only available until Easter Sunday and all for under 20 bucks. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Color your Easter with flowers. Gee, my flowers just bloom too much. Said no one ever. Hi, this is Kenneth Waters. We had a crazy winter and everyone's ready for flowers in the garden. Waters Flower Power is made specifically for Arizona that gives flowers that extra boost to burst into bloom. It's an energy kick in the plants. Get ready for roses that rule, peppers that pop, and tomatoes that triumph. More power to the flowers with Flower Power at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.